Hokkaï is a picturesque little town of old buildings, nesting storks and wine cellars located in northeast Hungary. In the 17th century, the Jews of modern-day Poland and Ukraine were drawn to this region by trade in Tokai, the syrupy, amber-tinted wine that was very popular at the courts of Louis XIV of France and Peter the Great of Russia. Soon, there was a thriving Jewish community in the region whose life centered around the synagogue in the center of town. Today, it's still the largest building in Tokai, but it's empty and the community that once thrived and worshiped here is gone. Their memory and heritage is kept alive by a few remaining members who faithfully open the prayer room on special occasions and holy days when they are joined by descendants of Tokai Jews from overseas. Sadly, in Tokai now, the Torah is only read a few times a year because there aren't enough Jews left to form a minyan, the quorum of 10 men for a formal prayer service. Such is the devastation that was meted out on this community. It's been tragically decimated. You see, in the dying days of World War II, the Nazis knew that they had lost the war and were doomed. They showed their rage in one final horrific act of hatred and brutality in Eastern Europe. The Jewish women, children and elderly of Hungary were rounded up and sent to extermination camps in Germany and German-occupied Poland. All able-bodied Jewish men had earlier been put into slave labor battalions. And now the final orders came through that the men were to be taken on a death march to the extermination camps in Germany as well. The commanding officer of one such battalion was Zoltan Kubinyi. He had to make an agonizing decision. He could ensure his own safety and march the Jewish men under his command to Germany and certain death in the gas chambers. Or he could risk his own life and defy the order and lead these men back to Hungary and freedom. That's the fatal choice that confronted Zoltan Kubinyi. This is his story, a story of courage, defiance and honour. It's a story that will surprise you and inspire you. Zoltan Kubinyi was Hungarian, and he was an unlikely Nazi. For one, he was a soldier who refused to carry a gun. In the heady days of 1936, idealistic young men from all over Europe and from all over the world had flocked to Spain to fight the rise of right-wing nationalism. General Francisco Franco, supported by Hitler's Nazi Germany, had started civil war in Spain. And the idealistic Zoltan went to Barcelona to report on the war against fascism. Zoltan's life was turned upside down during his time in Spain, but it wasn't because of the war. Instead, it was because there in Barcelona, he met a man called Struve, who introduced him to the Bible and the good news about Jesus. Zoltan accepted Jesus became a Christian and was baptized. In 1942, Zoltan returned home to Budapest, the capital of Hungary. For a time, he supported himself by selling Christian books from door to door. After that, he worked in leadership in a church organization. In January 1943, Zoltan married the love of his life in Budapest. Later that year, a son was born. The recently married couple called him Martin. Martin was just six months old when his father was called up into the Hungarian army. Because of his qualifications, Zoltan was given the rank of warrant officer. Zoltan had no choice in the issue of joining the Hungarian army or not. He was simply conscripted. But the amazing thing is that the Hungarian army 
was allied on the side of Adolf Hitler's Nazi Germany. The same ideology that Zoltan had opposed in Spain seven years earlier. And the question for Zoltan was how would he face this challenge when this was all so contrary to his values? God's commandments say, you shall not kill. And so he wouldn't. He would go to war, but to save life, not to take it. So now, Zoltan Kubinyi was in the Nazi-allied Hungarian army. And to continue his story, it's important to understand what was going on in Hungary at the time. The nation of Hungary was allied with Germany during World War II. However, in 1944, the Hungarian government initiated secret negotiations with the Allies. And when Germany found out, it occupied Hungary and established its own Nazi-backed puppet government. That happened in March 1944, two months before Kubinyi had been conscripted into the Hungarian army. In 1940, all the Hungarian Jewish men of military age were taken away to forced labour battalions. The vast majority of them never saw their families again. It was the fateful encounter between one of these Jewish forced labour battalions and Warrant Officer Zoltan Kubinyi in a Russian forest that was to decide the fate of many lives. In the spring of 1944, the men were working in the Bryansk forest in Russia. Many of the men had already died from malnutrition and the harsh conditions. Deep in the forest, some of the men from the labor battalion made contact with the partisans. These Jewish resistance fighters said to them, listen, why don't you just overpower your guards, take their rifles and come and join us? The men in the labor camp had a very heated discussion about this idea. Many were in favor of it. Others argued, what about the old and the sick men among us? Wouldn't we be endangering them? Eventually, they decided not to rise up against the guards. But a few days later, the men who drove the wagons into town to get supplies never returned. The following day, another 20 men went missing from the work detail. They'd all run away to join the partisans. The commanding officer of the labor battalion decided that he had to do something. So he decided to use decimation where they would line the men up and kill every 10th man. When the commanding officer told the men, they naturally reacted with fear and terror. The commanding officer decided that he needed authorization for the decimation and that he would travel to Gomel, 300 kilometers west, where the German headquarters were to get official approval. Meanwhile, the men were to be locked up in the compound in the forest. The men waited in fear for the commanding officer to return, not knowing who would live and who would die. The commanding officer had gone in a horse and wagon and along the road, a truck had spooked the horse, which had bolted and hurled the wagon into a ditch. The officer was thrown out and ended up with a broken leg. The driver and the commanding officer's aide, young Jewish men from the labor battalion, took him to hospital but they didn't mention the purpose of the injured commanding officer's visit. The German command sent another Hungarian officer to replace him. That officer was Zoltan Kubinyi. Now, as soon as Kubinyi arrived, he gathered the Jewish men together and said to them, I can understand why you want to escape, but you have to understand that I cannot protect you from the consequences if you do that. If you will all stop trying to escape, I will try to protect you as best as I can. Everyone agreed that they would stop trying to escape and trust Kubinya to help them. And from that very first day, things got better. Morton Fuchs was one of the men and a survivor of that forced labor battalion. He said, Kubinyi was very different from all the commanding officers we had before him. The rest had been cruel, treating us horribly, we still worked long, hard days with little food, but he was kind and respectful to us. He protected us against the abusive German orders for physical labor 
by negotiating on our behalf. He always saw to it that we had humane lodging and enough food. Every day was a struggle for survival, but Kubinyi set about creating a sense of community among the men. He was also respectful of the men's religious practices and encouraged them to keep their faith alive even when all humanity appeared to be lost. The men had to work every day, even on Yom Kippur, their most holy day, except that on that day, they all fasted. Kubinye came out to the fields and fasted with them and allowed them to pray during their breaks. He even arranged for an extra ration of food for the men that evening. Another example of his kindness was how Kubinyi treated one of the men in particular. His name was Isaac Gutman, and he was a great scholar and also very well educated in Judaism. Isaac was strictly kosher, and for years he ate only bread, jam and margarine. He was frail and weak, and found it difficult to do the heavy work that all the men had to do. His life was endangered. So Kubinyi appointed him to be the camp rabbi, and then he didn't have to go out to work. Instead, once a week, he had to deliver a sermon. He was the camp clergyman, and that was the extent of his duties. One morning, as they were being marched to a new location, they took a break by the side of the road. And as was his custom, Kubinyi allowed the men to pray during their break. And so the men were in the middle of their prayers when suddenly they saw a group of officers with soldiers coming toward them in trucks. The men quickly stopped praying, but Isaac Gutman was so devout that he just continued to pray. The men all urged him to stop, but he wasn't going to let anything interrupt his prayers. So Kubinyi quickly put Isaac in his own place up front in the wagon and covered him so that he could finish his prayers and not be caught. They resumed marching, with Kubinyi marching in front of the wagon as the soldiers passed by. These are just a few examples of the many ways that Zoltan continually interceded and helped the men to make it easier for them to survive. At the very end of the war, the Nazis could see that they were going to lose and there was no more need for the workers. Kubinyi received orders to march the men toward Germany to a concentration camp, where they were all to be killed. Instead of obeying orders, Kubinyi sabotaged them and at risk of his own life, decided to try to save the lives of his men. So he marched them in the opposite direction, back toward Hungary. Along the way, Kubinyi managed to hide the men in barns and farmhouses. One day, they were hiding in a farm near the city of Mishkolz in Hungary, when suddenly the Hungarian military police came and arrested them all under orders from the Nazis. The military police then escorted them on a forced march in the direction of Germany and the death camps. During this time, Kubinyi refused to abandon them and was always by their side, trying to help them and encourage them as best he could. One night, while the 140 men were all sleeping in a barn, they were woken by Kubinyi, urgently whispering to them, get up quickly and quietly. We need to leave right away. What had happened was that some of the battalion guards had gotten the military policemen nice and drunk. And when they'd all finally fallen fast asleep, Kubinyi had come to get the men so that they could escape. So they crept out of the barn and ran and marched as fast as they could the whole night in the opposite direction towards Hungary. After two or three days, the men arrived in the large Hungarian city of Balashtjamat. From there, they could hear the booming of artillery and the explosion of bombs. Kabinye sheltered them in different cellars in the city and hid them from danger. At night, no one could sleep. Everyone was scared because they could hear the noises of the war coming closer and closer. At that time, there were still around 140 men in the Jewish labor battalion. One morning, 
the men awoke to an unusual calm. The noises of the war had disappeared. Instead, they heard the voices of soldiers speaking, but not in German or Hungarian. Instead, they were speaking in Russian. The men carefully peeked out and slowly emerged from the cellar in which they'd been hiding. They realized that the town was being liberated. The war was finally over. When the Russian soldiers saw the men from the Labour Battalion, they knew immediately who they were from the yellow armbands with the Labour camp numbers. And so the Russians were very friendly to them. Very soon, the streets were filled with people. Some of them were Hungarian soldiers who were scurrying to quickly change out of their uniforms and into civilian clothes and hide among the peasants. That way, they wouldn't be caught by the Russians. When they saw this, the men from the Jewish Labour Battalion went quickly to find Kubinye. They told him what was going on and encouraged him to quickly change from his uniform and blend in with the other people. But Kubinye refused. They begged and pleaded with him to do as they asked. But instead, he said, No, I won't. I haven't done anything wrong. I have nothing to be ashamed of. I am proud to have saved the lives of you men. I'm an honorable member of the Hungarian army. Nothing will happen to me. He just stood his ground when the Russian soldiers came to arrest him. The men tried to protect Zoltan like he had protected them. They pleaded with the soldiers saying, this is a good man. He saved our lives. Don't take him. But the Russians wouldn't listen and they took Zoltan Kubinyi away. The men in the Jewish Labour Battalion were devastated. What could they do to help their commanding officer now? Well, they knew that Kubinyi had a wife and child living in Budapest. So they agreed to try to help him by helping his family. After the war, life was hard for everyone. So they took turns to send her packages of food supplies every month. In response, the men would always receive a thank you note from her. After about a year, she sent word not to send any more because she had found a good job and could now provide for herself and her son, Martin. She also told them that she had received word about her husband, that he had died in Siberia, where he had been taken as a prisoner of war. He had died from typhus in a labour camp there and was buried in an unmarked grave. But Zoltan Kubinyi's story doesn't end there. The reason why we know Zoltan Kubinyi's name today is due to one of the prisoners in the Jewish Labour Battalion, Morton Fuchs, and his daughter Marta. They just couldn't let Kubinyi's story end in an unmarked grave in the frozen wastes of Siberia. More than 40 years after these events, Morton was embarrassed and ashamed to admit that he had forgotten the name of the man who had rescued him and so many others. So Morton made it his mission to find out his rescuer's name. He didn't want his commanding officer forgotten. And Morton wanted to make sure that the man who had saved his life and the lives of so many others was honored at Yad Vashem. Yad Vashem is the World Holocaust Remembrance Centre in Jerusalem. Here, the righteous among the nations are honoured. These are Gentiles, non-Jews, who took great risks to save Jews during the Holocaust. So Fuchs started writing to as many of his Labour Battalion friends as he could find. Perhaps they could remember the name of the man who had saved their lives. Although they all seemed to have forgotten his name, they all replied that they remembered the man's goodness and compassion to them. Finally, after many months, Fuchs received a letter with the name he was looking for, the name of Zoltan Kubinyi. Next, Fuchs prepared the documentation to send to the World Holocaust Remembrance Center. Because a second witness was required, he obtained the testimony from Isaac Gutmann, Remember him, the young man who became the camp rabbi? Well, Isaac wrote this. 
A day before we were liberated, Zoltan was looking for me to make sure I had food to eat. He brought me some cooked potatoes because he knew and respected that I, being a very religious man, didn't eat from the regular food. He was a very religious Seventh-day Adventist, and many times we used to discuss together passages from the Bible. Morton Fuchs himself wrote the following words. Zoltan Kubinyi was a true human being in the deepest sense of the words. During this catastrophic event, when civilized, intelligent people were blinded with irrational hatred and innocent people, mothers with babies in their arms were slaughtered. He was a man. Risking his own life, he stood up for and defended the innocent, persecuted people. The memory of Sultan Kubinyi deserves the highest honor that a person could possibly deserve for his altruistic, heroic, and self-sacrificing activities. And so it was that in February 1990, the name of Zoltan Kubinyi was inscribed with the righteous among the nations at Yad Vashem in Jerusalem. And in February 1994, Martin Kubinyi received the certificate and medallion of honor on behalf of his father from a Yad Vashem representative. Three months later, Marta, the daughter of survivor Morton Fuchs, stood here on the second floor of the synagogue in Tokai. The first Holocaust commemoration ever was being held in the town to mark the 50th anniversary of the destruction of the Hungarian Jewish community. Here, Marta Fuchs, on behalf of her father, told the story of how Zoltan Kubinyi had saved the lives of some of the only Jewish men from this town who had survived the war. As everyone present broke into spontaneous applause, Marta left the microphone and walked to the back of the hall, where Martin, Zoltan Kubinyi's son, was standing. He had never had the chance to know his father. She looked into the son's eyes that were now filled with tears and said, I want to thank you for your father. I am here in this world because of what he did in saving my father. Afterwards, Marta asked him the crucial question that had haunted her and her father for years. Why didn't your father take off his uniform and save himself as he had saved so many others. The son answered, I've also often thought about why he didn't take off his uniform. I think it was because he was such a religious man who was always honest and never lied. For him, it would have been a lie. He hadn't done anything wrong. So why should he take the uniform off? And that is the mystery at the heart of Zoltan Kabinya's story. Perhaps it's easy for us to say, well, what Kabinya did was irrational and even wrong and foolish. He would have done nothing wrong by taking his uniform off. He would not only have saved himself, but he would have saved his wife and son much sorrow and grief. But here's a question to think about. Could the Zoltan Kubinyi, who courageously saved so many others without thought for himself, have been the same man who removed his uniform and deceived others to hide among the peasants? At the heart of Kubinyi's character, there seems to have been an unshakable sense of integrity and honor. He was guided by moral and religious principles. He held firm to principles that he simply would not betray. Even though Kubinyi wore a military uniform, he answered to a far higher commanding officer than anyone in the Hungarian army. It was the Bible that taught him that he ought to obey God rather than men. In one of the darkest eras in which the world was plunged into brutality and horror, it was the Bible that kept Kubinyi firmly focused on what was good and right. And I'm sure that Zoltan Kubinyi knew this verse from the Bible well, from John chapter 15 and verse 13. 
Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Jesus is talking about how he would lay down his life for us, his friends. Kubinyi was prepared to lay down his life because he had learned to love like Jesus. So let me ask you, where are you heading in your journey through life? Do you need direction and purpose in your life? Have you experienced the love of God? It was the love of God that transformed an ordinary person like Zoltan Kubinyi into a hero. And it will do the same for you. Like Kubinyi, you too can leave a mark on this world for good. Yes, you can make a difference. If that's what you wish, why don't you join with me in this prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the life of Zoltan Kubinyi. We're so thankful that his name and his memory can be preserved. We know that you want us to leave a legacy of love and kindness in this world. So Father, pour your love into our lives and may we share that love with others. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. The story of Zoltan Kubinyi is so inspiring. He certainly did do the right thing. He made the right choice. But sometimes in our own lives, we don't always know just what the right thing is. Well, if you'd like to be able to perceive God's will for your life better, and ensure you make right choices and do the right thing, then I'd like to recommend the free gift we have for all our viewers today. It's the popular reading guide, God's Plan for My Life. You'll find it most helpful in guiding you regarding how to make right choices. So please don't miss this wonderful opportunity to receive the gift we have for you today. Here's the information you need. Phone or text us at 0436 333 55 in Australia or 020 422 2042 in New Zealand or visit our website tij.tv to request today's free offer and we'll send it to you totally free of charge and with no obligation. Write to us at GPO Box 274, Sydney, New South Wales, 2001, Australia or P.O. Box 76673, Manukau, Auckland, 2241, New Zealand. Don't delay. Call or text us now.